die vormelijke mensen, Hebron family, brothers, sisters, good morning, good morning, it's nice to see your faces, some faces I haven't seen for a while, God bless you, thank you worship team, thank you guys, we appreciate you, every drum beat, every note, practiced and sung, that zealous bass guitar, thank you, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you for that prayer of courage and that word of courage. I really witnessed with that this morning. I actually found myself reading some scriptures on courage this morning. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? And uh, do you know that there's a time when God expects us to be brave? And when we turn back, in the day of battle, we displease him. And there's a scripture in Revelation that actually says the cowardly and unbelieving will not enter the gates. So we're called to be courageous. And sometimes that means at the expense of our safety, <laughs> the expense of some things. We're called to be courageous and to follow our King. Hallelujah. Even if it costs us something. So a good word. Thank you. And uh, it's great to hear courageous voices in this time when there is pressure on our value system. Standing up and saying, this is what we believe. This is what we believe. So... Uh, yeah, may the Lord give us grace. May the Lord give you grace. Realize the enemy wants you to turn aside. He wants you to turn aside. And when God's voice is unclear, that's when people turn aside. Or when they don't get the answers they want, then they turn aside to make their plans. They choose their idolatry and, and follow other, other gods and other plans. And the Lord says, be careful. Be careful. That's casting off restraint. Um, there's a time when his governance is not completely manifest. We've got his word, but we don't have his governance completely manifest. And so in that time, we can be tempted to go our own way. Make our own plans. Maybe we can just check our phones are off so we don't get distracted this morning, if you don't mind. But uh, when we go our own, you know, it's like when the governance in us in the city, when the police force is not on its, on its post, we start breaking the law. Isn't it true? We're tempted because there's no one checking up. So why, you know, why keep the law? But be careful, those are testing periods when the governance is less obvious and less manifest. He's still watching. He's still watching. And when he returns and governance is restored, then everything that's out of line and it's been built out of line with the law is immediately in trouble. So just beware. <laughs> the word says, blessed is he who keeps the law. Blessed is he who stays Submitted to the law. So, um, hallelujah. So let's just pray this morning as well over the word. Father, I thank you for your word. It is a light to our feet. And uh, as we talk about courage, will you help us to be faithful? Help us to be faithful. Bless this time, this morning, this precious day, this precious moment, this important moment in the life of this church. There's some precious things we're going to share this morning. Lord, will you keep your hand on my mouth? Will you govern here this morning? Just had, while we were worshiping, I had this image of a male lion walking through the hall. And I just saw his back, the top of his back thigh, the muscle, the smooth and healthy skin, ready 
strong, healthy. That's our God. That's our King. He hasn't grown old or weary. He is ready. He is fully ready to manifest all His glory in this earth. Blessed is He who trusts in Him, who waits on Him, who waits for Him. Hallelujah. Lord, manifest Yourself in Your Word this morning. Come and confirm Your Word. Come and confirm Your plans. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So I just want to do a little bit of a, a reminder. Um, you know, as we treasure what God has been saying and uh, treasure, try and treasure what He is saying, um, I encourage you that... Uh, the eldership's responsibility is to, is to discern what he's saying um, and to make decisions based on what we discern the Lord's saying. Thank you that you understand we don't just have the written word, we have the Holy Spirit, the living presence of the Lord. And he is here to lead us, he's here to guide us, he's speaking and it's up to us to try and discern. It's up to you also to discern and if you send something to bring a word to this eldership team, and uh, it's up to you to pray for this eldership team. How often? Once a year? Can I say daily? Put us on your prayer list, especially in this season. Pray for us every day. You want us to hear the Lord and be led by Him and lead you well? Pray for us, please. Amen? So I just encourage you to do that. Thank you. Um, and I thank you for your prayers, if you're praying for us. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, yeah, just your presence here this morning. Bless you. Well done for being here this morning. Um, so just to recap quickly, the last three weeks we've had uh, a great word starting the year. Honor my Holy Spirit and His voice through Brian. And um, such a great voice, Shannon and I began to pray following that, lead me, Holy Spirit, in our decisions as we wrestled with the plan, as we wrestle with the weeks ahead. Um, lead us, Holy Spirit. And uh, while we were praying, I just saw that prophetic picture again of the ship being sailing forward, of the, the sails full of wind. We've used it over, the, over last year with the 20th celebration. And that prophetic word, my wind will fill the sails. But I found that question rising up in my spirit. What are, what's the course, you know? Um, what is the, the coordinates uh, of our advance? And the word vision was highlighted for me. So I, I, I dug into that word vision and uh, came to the conclusion that from Scripture, it's all about what we're seeing in the Spirit. It's about what we're seeing, remember? Are you seeing? And I, and I felt that clarity come to me that vision for the believer is the vital ability to see what God is revealing. You've got to be able to look away from what the world is saying, and you've got to hear His voice. You've got to see what He is revealing. And uh, without prophetic vision, without prophetic re redemptive revelation from God, the Word says in Proverbs 29, the people perish Another, word, another description of that word or translation of that word perish is to go astray, to become uncovered, to become vulnerable. It includes rebelliousness. <laughs> All right? They go astray. So if you become unaware of what God is revealing, you and I as believers have a responsibility to take note of what He is revealing. Amen. Whether it's written down already or whether the Holy Spirit is highlighting what is written in the season. Amen. That's your responsibility if you're a believer. If you believe in Jesus, you, then you believe He died for you, and you believe He's risen, and you believe He's coming back. Amen. And you believe He sent His Spirit. Hallelujah. And we are not alone. We're not alone. Just look at the person next to you and say, we are not alone. <laughs> Holy Spirit is here. 
The Holy Spirit is here. And when you accept Jesus, the Bible says, Holy Spirit comes where? Comes to live in you. You become a temple. If you're a believer, say to the person next to you, I'm a temple. I'm a temple. He lives in me. <laughs> tell, tell the person next to you. <laughs> I'm a temple. He lives in me. Hallelujah. How many of you at, at times feel the Lord has left you? Be honest. You're tempted to believe it. Tempted to believe it. the Lord has left you. Come on. Come on, you're a lich, man. <laughs> you all feel tempted to believe he leaves you at times, don't you? Well, it's not true. He's faithful. He's faithful. He's faithful. We were at a wedding yesterday, by the way, if you know Judith. Her firstborn was married yesterday afternoon. We witnessed it. Beautiful ceremony out at the Oda Kral. And we witnessed again those beautiful moments of vow making in the presence of the Lord and uh, the pastor facilitating illustrated that we have this covenant relationship with a faithful king. And uh, so I just want to remind you, he's made promises to you. He has made promises. I made promises to Shannon. Count the, count the years again quickly, but a while ago. <laughs> 1992, you do the maths. We got married. 30 years ago. 31. Coming for 32 years this year. I made promises to Shannon. I'm still faithful to those promises. How much more is he faithful to the promises he makes to you and to me? Amen? And uh, he requires you to trust him. He's not going anywhere. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. So where is he? He's still here. But I can't feel you, Lord. I can't see you. Fear is much bigger in the room than you right now. No, it's not. It's just much bigger in your awareness. Come on. I'll say that again. Sometimes you're so afraid and you need an answer right now and you want God to move at your pace of fear and panic. And he's still at peace. <laughs> he's got everything under control. He wants you to slow down. And partner with his spirit. And you're running down the road with the wrong spirit. So calm your nerves. Calm the fear. Stop partnering with the wrong spirit of fear. Recognize that spirit's luring you away from the truth of his faithfulness. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I was reminded this week that his presence manifests in three ways. He is omnipresent. The Bible says he's omnipresent. Psalm 139. Where can I flee from your presence? There's not a place on this planet or in space or in the solar system or in the universe that you can find where his presence is not involved. Every law of this universe is upheld by him. If he were absent, we would disintegrate, cease to exist. He's upholding your very existence. Come on. I heard, was it Catherine? Catherine, where are you? Marie. She posted something awesome. This is so lacquer. It's a nice little on uh, the universe again. And just how they, there's evidence of the young universe they are uncovering fresh evidence, new evidence of a young universe, 6,000 years old. Isn't that interesting? Why would it be 6,000 years old? Well, the Bible says it's 6,000 years old. It's not millions of years old. It may appear to be millions of years old at first glance, but upon 
more investigation you discover, but it's not. It's exactly as he said it. Exactly as he said it. I won't get into that. I try to preach a whole sermon series on that one. But uh, he's faithful. He's omnipresent. He's omnipresent. We get used to this existence and we think God is not in it. He's in it. He's upholding it. Everything, your every breath, your every heartbeat, your ability to look, see, hear, understand, remember, he is behind it all. For one reason above all, that you might know him. Amen. Made in his image. I can relate to my wife much better than my husky dog who's now passed. But why? Because we have so much in common. Isn't it true? You know, if you look at a spider, you don't know which eye to look in because there's like 16 of them. There's only two like me. I've got a lot in common. You know? She's got hair above her eyes. It's not unusual. It's common. <laughs> Amen? We get to look at each other face to face, commune. All my senses are geared to communicate, to understand her, to know her to partner with her, to fellowship with her, to receive her care and her communication and her affection and her love and to reciprocate. It's the same with you and God, made in His image. Why would He make you so amazingly and then disappear? He's right here waiting for the relationship, waiting for the connection. omnipresent. He's communicated that he's the creator. He's communicated that he's the redeemer. He's the savior. And he's invited you to receive him as such. Hallelujah. And if you have come to that place of choice and surrender, then you've said, Jesus, I believe you are the savior of the world. I believe that you died on the cross for me and that God the Father raised you from the dead again. I believe that you are the Savior of the world. And I call you Lord of my life. I surrender. That is a point of choice. It doesn't happen by default because you grew up in a Christian home. It's a choice. I didn't get married to Shannon just because we grew up together or in the same neighborhood, you know, just happened like by, are you married? Yeah, it just kind of happened. There was a point of discussion and reasoning and investment and negotiation and you I had to get a few things in place. I had to find a ring and I had to line up a day of asking. I even wrote a song. And I woke her up in the middle of the night, singing it outside the window. Actually, I didn't wake up, but mother had to wake up because he's singing. You see, <laughs> what? And I, and I did it at a strategic moment. It was the day, a year later, that I'd uh, pr what? Sorry, it was seven exactly seven months after I took her out the first time. On the 13th of September. Yeah, and we got engaged. She, she said yes. She said yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. And my, my, my precious parents-in-law, they, they teamed up with me. They were all for it. Isn't that a blessing? They filled the room with flowers and honey, honeysuckle, jasmine. I, wherever I pass a jasmine bush, I remember that day. So if you've invited Jesus Christ to be Lord and Savior of life, you will remember when you did it. Not casually. It's a very important transaction. It's a transaction which hands over the rights of ownership of your life to the King of Kings. And if you have not done that, then you are not born again yet. 
You might know about God and believe in things about Him, but if you haven't surrendered, you are not born again yet. You have not come under His Lordship. And when you've come under His Lordship, there will be evidence. There will be evidence. Don't call yourself a member of the church. That is not salvation. You've got to be submitted to the King. You've got to be in covenant relationship with Him. He's the only one that can save your soul. Not this church. Not membership anywhere. And you have a responsibility to your relationship with Him. And you've got great counsel and insight into that relationship. It's here. It's a very big book. Get reading. <laughs> Amen? That's why you're here this morning, is to be guided in it. So, when you invite Him as Lord and Savior, His Spirit comes to indwell you. He says, you've handed over the ownership. Thank you. I'm taking up residence. I'm taking up residence in you. And you become my dwelling place. Together with all the other believers who call on His name. You become part of that family. Hallelujah. You come under His command, under His Lordship, under His rule, under His reign. He becomes King and Lord of your soul. His Spirit indwells you. From that moment forward, you are different from everyone else in this world who does not know Christ. You are indwelt. And His Spirit communes, speaks, communicates with your spirit. So next time you want to steal that cookie, next time you want to break the speed limit, dodge the tax man, Holy Spirit, mm. wait a minute, you're in covenant with me now. You're carrying my name. You're carrying my name. You've got to be careful how you live your life. And so he convicts and convinces us that we are sons of God. He convinces us and convicts us of righteousness, of sin. He's with you. He's never left you. If you made that decision, He took you seriously and He moved in. And He's faithful. He didn't move out the next time you sinned. It became a bit uncomfortable between the two of you, but it, He didn't leave. You may have ignored Him, you know, it's one thing to slip up and say, sorry, I remember my covenant and my commitment to you. It's another thing to establish your sin as a lifestyle and defend it and invest in it and justify it. It's another thing. It's a dangerous place. And so this Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He's gentle. He doesn't take out the loud hailer. Turn up the volume full <laughs> and shout at you. He nudges, whispers. But when we don't listen, eventually he sets up circumstances. All of a sudden, stuff starts going wrong. It doesn't work out. It doesn't work out as you intend. Your plans seem to lack a blessing on your life. Trouble comes because he's in you, but you're not living under him. You're not submitting to him. And in his kindness, he sets up moments of challenge so that we, we get humbled again and we come back to him. So I touched a little bit on that a couple of weeks ago. And how our troubles are a gift sometimes. <laughs> Amen? Thank you, Lord, for fire to get rid of all this muck in the way. Now I see you. Remember Job? Job went through stuff. He, everything was cool. He was the model of life. You know, lots of money, lots of everything, lot, big family. And the day it was gone. Boom. One day. And he spent 
a long time, his friends came to sit with him. They sat in silence in front of him for seven days, fasting. Seven days, quiet. No one spoke a word. That's how big his grief was. They just sat and kept quiet. But at the end of Job, it says, I had heard of you, but now I've seen you. And I repent in dust and ashes. And the story of Job concludes with the blessing restored even more as Job comes under a better understanding of God. So, just a reminder, he loves us enough to accept us the way we are, but he loves us too much to leave us the way we are. <laughs> Amen? So I came into the ministry, looking back, I think, I don't know what possessed me to say yes. <laughs> I don't know what possessed me to say yes to becoming an elder in Hebron. I did not know what would hit me over the next years. It was all faith. I knew the Lord had called me. Um, looking back, I think I might have waited 30 years. <laughs> but uh, the Lord has used those 30 years in my life. Amen? He's grown me. He's shaped me. When I came into the ministry, I'd just come out of Bible school. And I could quote all the scriptures. You know, if you misquoted them, I would tell you, no, 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 you know. And uh, it's one thing to know them. It's another thing to live them. And uh, I've spent my life learning to live the word. And I have not arrived. How about you? Have you arrived? I'm still learning. Um, there's been times I've wanted to back away from this. Because this is public accountability. Every time I stand up here, my life is on display. You guys, some of you have the privilege of hiding in the back row. I don't. My life is on display. You've been watching it for years, some of you. And so when stuff doesn't work out in my family, in my life, I've got to explain. Isn't it true? So just to remind you, that's what goes with eldership. It's not comfortable. It's a yoke. And uh, God didn't call me because I was brilliant. <laughs> he didn't call me because I was top of the class or I was very handsome, although, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I went for the, hair, the hairdresser. The hairdresser loves my ears because she made them stand out even more. <laughs> Thank you, my darling. It helps me when I go sailing. But um... <laughs> we are not perfect. We have faults. We have insecurities. Isn't that true? And uh, in his mercy and his kindness, he uses us. Why? Because he chose us, he gifts us, he calls us. And the word says he doesn't choose the powerful, the mighty, the clever. He chooses the foolish things. So welcome to my world. <laughs> I'm the foolish thing that he chose. That the glory might be of him. When somebody comes through this life which is amazing or anointed or from heaven, and there have been some moments, praise the Lord, <laughs> but uh, it's so that the glory goes to him. Amen. It's the same with you. So we've been talking about his presence in your life. Omnipresent. Indwelling if you've invited him in. And thirdly, his manifest presence. He manifests. I have had experiences where I touch people and they can't stand. I have had experiences where I've touched people and I've seen their leg grow in front of my eyes. I have had experiences where I've touched somebody and they just start speaking in a language they've never learned. I have had experiences where I've played a song on my guitar and people started to repent. I have had those experiences. 
manifestations of his influence. He's amazing. When you carry him, anything can happen. I've had experiences of walking down the road. Somebody was next to me, and he just started confessing his sins as I walked past. I've had some of those experiences. Not recently. (laughs) Some of these were, you know. I've had the experience of being used by him to preach the gospel, and I've seen many accept Jesus. I've had that privilege. But it's all him. It's all him. In different seasons, he's used me in different ways. And I'm sure you've got stories to tell too. He's amazing. You let him in, he's amazing. And the manifestations are amazing. But the fact that there's no recent manifestation or there's no current manifestation or no obvious manifestation of him does not mean he's left. So look at that believer next to you in their eyes and tell them the fact that there's no current manifestation does not mean he's left you. He's in you. He's for you. He's with you. He's listening. He's speaking. He's relating. Hallelujah. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. In the Old Testament, he was with us. In the New Testament, he's in us. That's what Jesus said of John. Amongst men, there is none greater than John, but the least in the kingdom of God, because John prophesied until the kingdom, the least in the kingdom is greater than he. You're amazing. Look at the person next to you, tell him, you're amazing. You're amazing. You're a temple. Washed by his blood. Purchased by his blood. Set apart for his dwelling place. Together with many other dwelling places around you. And that's why coming together starts something called the corporate anointing. There's a gathering of the dwelling places. Can you see that? And that's why when you're alone... When I was in the army, they told me, if you walk alone, you're a soft target. You know what a soft target is? Easy pickings for the devil. Easy pickings for the enemy. You don't walk alone. In the army, you walk together. You cover one another. And you learn your skills, your fighting skills, so that you can contribute. You can defend your brother. When they're going through a rough patch, you can join the fight. Amen? We need each other. You need others. You're not made to walk alone. If you want more of the manifestation, where two or more gather in my name, there I am in the midst of them. There's an additional something when we come together. So we need to come together. We need to find partnership You can't be loners. You will probably realize if you don't have partnership, you're not growing. You're the same. Year after year. Still stuck with the same stuff. The same. You're not growing. Because a finger grows when it's attached to the body. (laughs) When it's detached, what happens? It starts to to die. So it's up to you if you want to be obedient to that. It takes effort to find partnership. It's not comfortable. It's time out. It's money. It's petrol. But what you're doing is you are sowing in your brother and sister's lives. You arrive to see how can you be a blessing? How can you be an encouragement? How can you help? Thank you for opening your house for a community group or a home cell as, we, as we, we've called them. You know, I realize oh, you're making tea, you're cleaning the room, you're putting it out, you're preparing a word, you're phoning us, you're reminding us, you're doing a lot. How can I help you? How can I help you? Maybe I can do the tea next week. 
I can sing, you know, so I could, I could sing and lead a bit of worship. Or I'm a prayer, you know, let me, let me know what, what you'd like us to partner with you in prayer for, for the home group. I think the Lord would be pleased with that. Bring the gifting that He's given you. Amen? You know, the pinky does not have the gifting of the thumb. This eyeball is awesome, but it doesn't have the gifting of this ear. We need one another. Amen? Good old story. I think you understand. We need each other. We need each other. Hallelujah. So, if you want more of His manifest presence, I want more of His manifest presence. People get saved when they experience His manifest presence. I haven't experienced all that the body of Christ testifies of. You've got to go and read that book, The God's Generals, if you want to hear some of the amazing things that have happened in the last hundred years in believers' lives. The Welsh Revival. Two old ladies, dangerous, <laughs> praying together in agreement for revival, dangerous, where two or, me, two or more agree concerning anything, it shall be done. Say partnership, partnership, say it again, partnership, we've got to find partnership, hallelujah, your gift needs to find a, another gift to partner with in the body, all things done in order. They saw a whole area come to Christ. People got convicted of sin far away from the church. They were so aware of their sin, they didn't know what to do. Unsaved people, what did they do? They gathered at the nearest place of accountability, which they could recognize was the police station. Did you know that? They came in their droves to the police station. I think eventually the police called the, the church and said, there's people here confessing their sins at the police station. We don't know what to do with them. Why? Because two old ladies found partnership. I think the one could not walk properly or something. They, they both had ailments. They couldn't get to church, so they prayed in their old age home. Don't underestimate old ladies. <laughs> They're awesome. <laughs> They're awesome. Do you know that they experienced something like the mist? It would gather in the meeting hall. Kids would lie down at it and sleep. Mist in the hall, like a cloud of glory. A mist, a visible mist. Am I right? Who remembers that? Azusa Street, something similar. Don't underestimate what God might do in our day and age if we get ready. If we line up with His heart. Amen. Hallelujah. Make yourself available. For what he wants to do in you, through you. Maybe you've got a word of encouragement that somebody else is desperate for. Maybe you've got some wisdom that somebody else is desperate for. Amen. And I'm not saying it's easy. It is not easy. We actually need more fathers and mothers to step up and say, I want to be trained. I want to be a home group leader. I want to open my doors. I want to open my home. I think I could help being an example for other believers and help them in their faith. We need more of you. We've lost some over the last three years, to COVID and other things. I've got, I'm, I'm, I'm about to, to announce the new home groups for this season, and there are some exciting hallelujahs coming. So, but uh, just to share that with you. CK, where is he? Is he still around? There he is. She had such a good testimony of his faith. And he shared a very important key to victory in the midst of his trouble. And he felt the Lord, when he was at his lowest, he felt the Lord saying, don't make your own plans and then invite me to bless them. You've got to surrender. You've got you to trust in me. You've got to let me do this. You need to rely on me, said the Lord. Look to me. Proverbs 3, 5. There's a very good 5 and 6. Solomon's advice on that. Lean on, trust in, and be confident in the Lord. With all your heart. And mind, and do not rely on your own insight or understanding. 
you know, that means you may have studied economy, economics. <laughs> you may have all the understanding of what's going on in, the, in, in, in South Africa economically. Maybe watching the investees, investing figures and things, you can see I'm brilliant at this. <laughs> the stocks, thank you. But the Lord calls you to step away from your understanding and to trust in His understanding. In all your ways, know, recognize, and acknowledge Him. And He will direct and make straight and plain your paths. He calls us to trust Him. He calls us to trust Him. Not our own understanding. So, beautiful word on faith last week and how CK came through, him and BK, all sorts of challenges last year, and still the Lord blessed them. They came through, got married in line with His will, and uh, they're blessed. Amen. Good word. Um, all right. So, Lord, I thank you. That your presence is here. You are omnipresent, ever present. But we get to have you inside of us when we accept you as Lord and as Savior. And then we can be part of seeing your manifest presence as we partner. So, Lord, my prayer is for everyone here that we would find partnership in this season, fruitfulness, that we would experience so much joy <laughs> in the coming months as we see the beautiful things that you begin to do through our lives. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Maybe just with every eye closed for a moment, just for a moment, you've heard me say, That if you have not come into a covenant relationship with Jesus by your own choice, you've not invited him into your life personally, that you are not born again yet. And um, I just want to give you that moment. If, if this is your moment, if the Lord is putting his finger on your life and you want us just to pray with you or just to acknowledge you, you need us. You need your, the body around you to help you grow and help you stand. So don't be afraid. It takes courage to say, I'm choosing Jesus. I want to choose Jesus. I want to, I want to push away that, that, that noise in my ears which is telling me, don't embarrass yourself now. Jesus is putting his finger on your heart. And you will know that. And you're tired of living life in your own strength. You want him. You want to come back to him. You know he made you, and you know he loves you, but you want to surrender. If that's you, everyone's eyes are closed. It's just between you and me. Why don't you slip your hand up and down? I want to see you. Just say, I need Jesus. Why don't you pray for me? Is there someone like that? Anybody? Any hand going up? I can see it. Let's give a few more seconds. Is there anyone? This is your moment. This is your day. It could change the rest of your life. It's time. The Lord's saying it's time. It's time to surrender. The sooner, the better. Don't wait and think next year, five years from now, when I'm older. Don't think that your best life is now while you're running wild. You're wrong. Your best life is when he's in charge and he starts to direct your steps. Is there anybody who wants to surrender this morning? Last chance. All right. Thank you. Lord, I bless every heart. If every heart has given their life to you, that you keep blessing their journey with you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah.
with what he said. Amen. Amen. So, <clears throat> I'm going to go straight on into some important announcements.